July 30, 2024. This is the S&P 500 E Futures Mini in the 2002 chart using NinjaTrader 8. That's what the chart looked like today. At around 7 o'clock Pacific Standard, which is about right here, there was the CB Consumer Confidence and the Jolt's Job Openings. It looked like, I mean, it happened right here, and I, would, I wouldn't say that it caused this big sell-off. I think this big sell-off would have happened anyways. So it wasn't really that big of a market mover, in my opinion. In the pre-market, prices just kind of spiked up. Kind of yesterday it sold off, spiked up, dropped around. This is the pre-market high, pre-market low, which prices didn't really revisit or show that much respect to. You know, maybe at the end, but nothing I would really consider. And then the pre-market highs, it wasn't really that important. It was this very big sell-off here, and I eventually found this red down channel. And inside there's these small swing legs as well as some consolidation areas, and then this big correction, two, I would say two, two leg correction on this purple channel, came back, consolidated, spiked up, and then went into the close. And then as you can see in the after hours, it sold off pretty heavily. So I'm gonna go into my trades. I took a total of four trades today, a lot, uh, kind of a lot and more than I usually take. I was, I lost on the first one and then the next three, I was profitable. So. I also found a few more setups and overall it was it was kind of a slow day early on there wasn't that many setups and then in the mid part of the day it was also kind of slow then it picked up i took like three trades in quick succession all, all in this one area and then the final one over here is the triple test going to the trades right now so that was the pre-market i saw this as a spike in a channel moving up this is the first setup that i saw but i didn't like it just simply because well, it's a reasonable setup, but it happened in the first minute. So I'm in Pacific Standard Time. You see it's 631.05. It's only in the first minute that the setup happened. So it felt a little iffy, but I thought it was a possible trade. So I did find this yellow up channel. I had one touch, two touch. I drew it earlier and I had these touches as well, but then it looked like it didn't quite fit as nicely. I mean, you could argue maybe there's a touch here. They're pretty close. It is bouncing off the EMA. The setup I saw was there is a hidden second entry long. So it's pushing through the pre-market highs. You have a new high here. It's a first entry long up here because this one within these two candles on a smaller tick time frame, you actually gotta have price move down, opens here, pushes and closes up here. So that's your first entry long. Same thing opens right where it closes and it pushes down. So this is your second leg and then pushes up. So it's your second entry long. I thought it was a bounce off this yellow up channel as well as bounce off the EMA. Decent signal bar. There is just enough room to scalp out before you hit the highs. I wasn't that concerned about this pre-market highs. The only thing I was concerned about was it was too early in the day and these candles are pretty, well, they're not, the, not that they're large, but they're just side by side. So it just gave me pause. So I thought this was a possible trade, but I didn't have the confidence or the courage to take it. So then prices, Continued up on this yellow up channel, breaks on this green down channel, follows down on this orange channel. No clean setups that I could see. It kind of chops up. I'm drawing these small short and trend channels. It's not really helping. You do have a new low here. First entry short, second entry short. This isn't a really good signal bar. It just feels a little iffy. <clears throat> so I left it alone. Prices move down, moves down on this yellow down channel, breaks and tests and makes a new low. And it comes roaring back. I don't have this red down channel drawn yet. <clears throat> then prices continue moving it hits this consolidation area so it's a break of this orange down channel it's trying to test the lows but in the process of testing it, it kind of hits this consolidation area but it quickly breaks out of it and it flushes down further at this point i have a number of trend lines drawn and trend channels and one of them i did have was this high here and touching here because at one point i also had something closer to this because this looks like it touches pretty well here, something down here. I'm going to go ahead and eliminate that, but that's something I also had at the time. It's a new high. It starts uh, pushing and selling off, and I notice the EMA is starting to get bearish, acting as a potential resistance. There is a consolidation area here, no clean second entries. You could argue maybe for this one, it's a new low, say first entry short, pull back, second entry short, like two legs up. It's not quite a confident trading range because this is what you see in real time 
So you wouldn't really confidently say this is a trading range. So even though there's a potential triple test, it's, I believe, early to trust the trade. It ends up working though, but right around here, then I thought, okay, maybe I'm in a trading range. And that's where I thought, okay, there was potentially a triple test there, but it's after the fact. You can't say there's a trade there after, you know, in real time, you didn't see it. And then, uh, well, what I meant to say is, Saying that I missed this trade isn't valid because I didn't see a trade in real time. If there was a trade and I missed it because I was too slow or I didn't read it right, then that's one thing. But in real time, it's hard for me to know that there's going to be a trade here. So prices continue moving down, breaks out, kind of follows this path down. It's a little choppy, a little hard to read for me. It was a new low here, Let's say first entry short, pull back. You technically have a second entry short, but this isn't a good signal bar for the second entry short. So definitely had to leave it alone. It pushes up. And at this time I drew, after this candle, I drew this up channel. And I thought, okay, we're clearly in some kind of push up. But among my many trend lines that I had drawn, I had this one, which is now red. And I thought, okay, there's one touch, two touch, three touch. Clearly there's a fourth touch. So now I'm at a, I'm at a conundrum. I'm not sure if this is going to be strong enough to push up or if this red down channel is going to be strong enough to keep prices down. I'm thinking more bearish because I saw a break, two attempts up, and potentially another move down. Reason being is the overall context of price action today is bearish because it had to spike up and then there's this huge, clearly, you know, sell off happening with the EMA also giving guidance that prices are starting to sell off. So I just, I'm not really to take, I'm not ready to take a long here. It's like I saw a new high, first entry long, potentially a second entry long, but I'm also not ready to take a short. So I do see a new high, first entry long, it's the first break, second entry long. It pushes up and it closes pretty, pretty uh, low here. So this is actually where I tried to take a trade. So I saw this, I'm believing that the bearish bias is going to overpower this bullish bias because there's two attempts up. This leg up is pretty shallow. I'm not that confident on it. It broke out. It made one attempt up. Actually, from here, it made one attempt, second attempt. But here, after the break, you're thinking of testing of the new high. But I like what I saw here. And I actually tried to take an entry after I saw this close. One tick below this guy. But what happened was I waited too long. So when I took it one entry below here, it opened down here. So actually, let me step back. I tried to take the trade here. I entered on this red candle, but the red candle actually made my scalp already. So I canceled the order before the green candle showed up because I was thinking of going short. When the green candle showed up, I was actually pretty relieved that I didn't take the, you know, after the trade happened because I thought maybe there's a chance it might push up and I get stopped out. So this is a missed trade. I was intending to go short, it was slow. Missed it on this candle, canceled it before the screen candle showed up. And lo and behold, it kind of does what I wanted to do, but unfortunately, I wasn't on that trade. So prices continue moving down. There's no clear entry for me to take. <clears throat> what would have been great was if I was on this trade and I had a runner. You technically do have a lower high here, but it's so far from the EMA. I don't have, and when this candle shows up, I don't have this orange down channel established to test it or to. Keep it as a key entry point. Prices then continue moving down. It bounces, makes one attempt up, pull back second attempt up. So here I'm thinking maybe there's some kind of up channel here. I saw a new high here, say first entry long, pull back. There's a second entry long here. I thought it was a possible trade, but I felt it was a little more aggressive. The reason I liked it was it's bouncing off this yellow up channel support. It pushed above the EMA. This break of this green down channel has made one attempt down, pull back, and technically kind of made a second attempt here. And I like that it moved one tick below and then pushed really strongly engulfing this candles because this isn't a really good signal bar to go long on. But I was thinking of the bounce off of here. So I thought this is a potential trade, but I felt it was more aggressive. So I left it alone. Then prices continue moving up. I didn't see any clean second entries here. It breaks out of this yellow channel and it starts flushing back down. So overall, it's clearly a very bearish day now. So <clears throat> I had the top of this particular channel here and I was treating this as a potential overshoot at one time. Didn't mean to do that. 
I was thinking something like this, but this is such a strong overshoot, such a strong dwell time. And then it continued back down here that I actually dragged it down and made the low end of the channel here. Prices are moving down on this orange channel, but I didn't see a clean second entry or clean and safe second entry. This is consolidation area. It's just very, very choppy, very, very noisy here. It kind of keeps moving in this, what I think is a trading range, but it's not a clean trading range. The reason being is the high side is a good resistance. It's clearly established. The low side, I was second guessing. So it used to be here where my cursor is, and I dragged it down to here, and I dragged it down to here, and you know it bounced here. I thought this is a potential fail breakout. It broke through, kind of hit this consolidation area, and it starts moving back up. So to clarify what I mean was I originally had my bottom of my trading range here. Then as price action kept moving, I moved it down to here, then here, then here, and finally here. And it was just a little hard to trust when to expect the bounce because it's making lower lows every time. But it kept coming back to the high side. So I'm thinking next time it gets back up here on a clearly bearish bias, I was going to try to look for a short. It moves up and it actually, so it hasn't made it to the top yet. It's actually where I take my first trade. So I saw this break of this orange up channel. It made one attempt up, pull back, and I'm seeing a second attempt up here. It also closed very bearish down. So I thought, okay, this is a trade. There's probably enough momentum to go come down to here. Now I took this trade right here, entered a little, trying to be a little more conservative at the close. So it opened, it filled me, it did a bunch of things. It actually came all the way down four ticks, but it didn't tick through my order. So I never got filled. I'm sure other people who had taken the same trade might have gotten filled because they might have been ahead of me in line. But unfortunately, I didn't get filled and it reversed, closed up high. Then it stopped me out one tick above my stop, which was above this double bar. So I looked at this in hindsight and I realized that the price action can came just from the bottom of this potential range. Now, I don't really trust the bottom of this range yet. However, you could see it's one leg up. It could be two attempts up. and There could be another big leg up to test the high side. And that's exactly what happened. It moves all the way up to the high side. Now, this is also where I got a got the idea of another trade. Now, this was probably emotion driven because I saw this as one leg up, pull back, two legs down, another leg up. It's hitting this as a potential resistance. There's one test, two tests, three tests, potential fourth test. So I thought, well, clearly prices are probably coming back down. Now, I entered one tick below this guy because this isn't a clean signal bar, but I saw this one. I thought, okay, prices are clearly coming back down. I entered and I quickly got the scalp. Now, this is a green trade, but I will admit it's riskier because this is the first break of this potential yellow up channel. Now, you could have drawn the yellow up channel maybe a little bit tighter like this, but it doesn't change the fact that this is the first break. And this first break could be another test of the high because there's still room to this red up, red down channel resistance. So although it worked out, I do look at it in hindsight and reevaluate that it wasn't a high probability trade. And the first trade that I took, excuse me, went too far. First trade that I took here, this failed second entry long, I should have thought about it more carefully because it did, just came from potential fail breakout is making lower highs every time. So this wasn't the best trade and this was an aggressive trade that happened to work out, but I clearly uh, have it in my notes to just be careful and wary of something like that. Definitely this was, uh, it was a reaction I believe to this because after I took a loss, it was a little bit of revenge trying to get it back. Pushes out, creates a fail breakout and then pushes down. And this is actually a planned trade that I actually like really well. So it's hitting the top of this trading range. There's a fail breakout. When this candle closed, I saw this is a really giant candle. It engulfed this big green candle. Next candle, it pushed down. EMA isn't as important right now, but I do take it into consideration. Just, you know, if it's just more ideal that even though the EMA is starting to flatten out, it's just nicer if it closed at the bottom. So I saw this candle and I thought there's a potential trade here, especially when this one opened, it flashed up. 
And then it only moved one tick. And I thought, okay, there's probably some momentum. It's probably high side. And it's going to come back down as the low side. So it went this candle during its life breaks below the EMA. And it did. I entered. It didn't fill me right away. And it gave me more confidence because it actually broke below this candle. So I thought, okay, cool. This is what I like. It went up. Clearly, it's going to engulf now because it broke below this guy. So it's an engulfing candle. It had a nice move up and down. It's below the EMA, which I admit isn't as important in a range, but still anything you can get to help you with your trade, you know, take it. It came back, filled me, and then very quickly, you know, gave me my profit. So I was pretty happy with this trade. Then I watch it and I just kind of just keeps going down. EMA starting to come into play. So this is a better trade out of the three. And I, I looked at the timestamp when I took these trades, like 9.37. Four minutes later, I took a trade. About four minutes later after that, I took another trade. So I knew clearly I was getting a little wired and I was starting to just potentially start inventing trades in my head. So I kind of had to step back because I also saw this new high, first entry long pullback, second entry long, a potential lower high here because I like that it was bounced off the EMA, but I didn't like that it was too close to the localized you know, resistance here because clearly there's some kind of support here. But I just marked it for myself because this was also about four minutes from this last trade or six minutes. I knew in a different mindset, I might have just jumped on this. Even though it worked, it's not the best plan because I know this one triggered me. Quickly got it back, both for mediocre trades. This is a better trade. Be grateful. And I just kind of sat on my hands for a little bit. Prices then move down on this orange down channel. Breaks, tests, and make the new low. It kind of reverses and moves back up. I saw the second entry long here. I thought this was a possible trade because it, it's a break of this yellow up channel. It's a new high, first entry long, second entry long. It's a decent signal bar because it's very strong. I wanted a touch and bounce off the EMA because this yellow up channel still has to test its high. So it's one attempt up, second attempt up. And I was aware that there's a resistance here. So this is a possible trade. Unfortunately, I didn't take it though. Prices move up. And this is another setup that I saw. So I don't have this purple up channel. I don't trust it yet until, well, I don't trust the downside. I trust the upside because I actually drew the top side because I saw it two, three, four touches pretty nicely here. And I was debating where the bottom was because I thought maybe it's a spike in a the channel. Then I dragged it down and put it here. There was another line here where you can see is the midline. I thought it was a spike in a channel. It's actually a little bit lower. So it fit pretty well here. I saw this as a two key entry points. It's a new high, so it kind of pushes down. You have the first entry long, second entry long. This kind of played out, but then it kind of pushes up. I saw this as a new high here, first entry long. Technically, the count resets, but it closed so low. I saw it as a first entry long potential, second entry long, and I saw this in real time. I also saw this as a new low, first entry short pullback. There's actually this candle that moved one tick below this guy. And I saw this as a two key entry point potentially bouncing off this purple up channel. And the EMA is starting to act as support. And I like that it moved one tick below and closed very strongly. It's also a very low risk six tick bar. So I thought this is maybe a trade worth taking because you have enough room from this, you know, if you entered one tick above here or even at the highs, enough room before you hit the double micro double top here. So this is a trade I thought may have been worth taking. It would have been better if there was at least a touch and bounce to have a third confirmation off the purple. But nevertheless, it worked out. It's this consolidation area. This is actually where I take my fourth trade. So I don't trust this purple up channel support that much. And but I do see that this is a potential resistance. And I saw a potential overshoot of both this yellow up channel and this purple up channel. So it's a break and it kind of consolidates. And I'm thinking I'm in a trading range here. It hits this. And I see one touch, two touch, three touch. Technically one touch, two touch. It's having trouble breaking up and over. And so the way I saw it is it's a break of this yellow up channel and made two attempts up to test the high. It's hitting a resistance. It's for whatever reason, can't get back to the purple side here, but it's starting to move sideways. So I'm thinking I'm in a trading range. This is a potential setup here. I saw it as a hidden second entry short. So what do I mean? So I saw a second entry short here. 
by saying new low. It's a first entry short, push up, second entry short. I wanted to reduce the risk as much as possible. This is a eight tick uh, bar, but I saw that there was pretty strong resistance here. So I entered at the low of this bar, quickly got the fill. I wanted to make sure I got out before I hit the EMA or potentially even got close to it. So I was able to get a quick scalp, but I my thinking was it's going to move back down to the low of this range. And it kind of does, but then it reverses. And depending on how much profit you're taking, if you took two points, you probably still would have gotten out. But anything more gets a little dicey. And I definitely didn't want to try to press my luck, you know, pushing it all the way down here if I was going for a larger reward. But then it bounces off this purple and it pushes, kind of moves up. This purple, I don't know. I really trust all that well because it did have a nice bounce here, but not so well here. There's an overshoot, but it starts moving up, and I find this orange up channel. It bounces. This is a really nice bounce off the purple up channel and EMA. Unfortunately, there was no setup here, but I just thought, you know, if something had just set up nicely here, that would have been perfect. Then it broke down, and this is your second entry long here, but it was just too far from the EMA now, also below the EMA. I was just wasn't keen on it. Prices then continue moving. I find this weak uh, gray down channel. It was more likely just a bunch of little swings in between. But I was thinking maybe there's something here. It kind of fit well at the tops here, and it's slicing through a bunch of these wicks, so I'm not that keen on it. And there's one touch, two touch, three touch, so maybe there's some kind of down channel going on right here. Overall context is there's a push down, maybe, maybe two attempts or one attempt up, maybe there's a second push down coming. It falls into this trading range as a fail breakout. Technically, you have a new high here. I did see a potential second entry long here because I saw it was a new high. It's a first entry long pullback, second entry long, two clear legs down, fail breakout. The thing I don't like about this fail breakout is it's going against the bias of the price action, which is bearish. While this side, this fail breakout is going with bias because the fail breakout here is on the high side and it's saying prices are moving back down with the overall bias. But this one here is the opposite. So I wasn't that keen on it, but it did move up. It hits this clear resistance. And I thought there's a multiple touch, touch test not triple test, but even more than that, and a potential lower high. Because I saw this as a lower high, first entry short, second entry short, lower high, break of this gray down channel. Prices look like they're moving back into this gray range, but you're also at the highs of the trading range. The fail breakout made one attempt, tried to create a similar symmetrical push on the other side, but it failed and pushed down. So I thought maybe there's a trade here, but it's a little less uh, convincing. I do like it's a strong reversal because I like it moved a few ticks up, engulfed this green candle, and pretty much matched it. The one thing that would have made this perfect is if it closed at the low all the way down here, or it ticked one tick below it to create a true full engulfing candle, then I thought maybe there would have would have been a trade there. But it didn't. It kind of pushes up, hits this consolidation area, and this kind of gets into the last 30 minutes of the day which I am weary of trading, but it had this crazy move up. The last 10 minutes, it just gets really choppy. There are some second entries in here, but nothing I would really take because it gets very volatile and gnarly in the last 10 minutes. So when I saw the charts, how I saw the charts today, the four trades, three were in quick succession. Of the three, the first two were more iffy. The third one was better. And this one I thought was okay. So hopefully that was helpful.